It's a kitty gang show on Scarbots Nation TV. It's the kitty gang show on Scarbots Nation TV. And we're coming to you live from CB Getty. It's the Giddy Gang Show. Giddy Gang Show. 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 It's the Giddy Gang Show on Cigar Box Nation TV. Well, well, well. Welcome back to the Giddy Gang Show. Mr. Glenn Watt here with me. Uh, as an extra um, bonus, perhaps we could call it today, uh, Nick is out again, a personal day being needed by the Nickster. So Glenn and I, once again, uh, running this blind. Doing our best. Happy but blind, by God. Here we are. Um, I actually, instead of sitting over behind the producer's desk today, I've got a monitor set up, a keyboard, and a mouse here so that I can run the main controls, the primary controls, directly while sitting here on the Juke Shack stage. So we're fixing to see how that goes. Hopefully a little smoother than next week. But anyway, we are happy that you are here with us. Uh, we've got what I hope to be a good show lined up for you, some great videos yes. that our good friends uh, submitted. Uh, we've got J Dub yeah. out there, Janice Wilson Hughes. Uh, got a video from her that some of you may have already seen. We shared it earlier this week mm -hmm. on the CB Giddy page, mm -hmm. the Nation page. So I watched about 20 seconds of it. And like, this needs to, be, well, before realizing this needs to be shared right away everywhere we can. So, boom, there it is. Uh, we've got a, a video from our good buddy, Reverend Todd, Rev yeah. Todd of Primitive Guitars. I've got a video montage and a little bit of a, a, a audio uh, a backing track from our good buddy Louis Lamana's Ooh. new album. Yeah. And we've actually got a few of those to hopefully give away today. So uh, let us know uh, if anything. I saw, I saw the nice uh, still image you made from last week's show. Let us know if anything yeah. sounds wacky. Yes. Uh, there's a good chance it will. That's, that's, that's a quote from the... I guess. I, I, I'm sure it is. Who we got out there so far? Today, Mr. today, Glenn and only. Watt. Over on YouTube, we've got Sandrine. Bonjour, Sandrine. The tubes. Oh, look at all the comments on the tubes. Michael Capato is actually over here on uh, YouTube, as is Hurdy Gurdy Guy. Jeremy Shaw's back. Good to see you, brother. John Cream. Rick Stevens. And we've got Dar Stella Bada just what? joining out there. Uh, Shaq from Shacksonville, Mr. Oh, wait Shaq a Collins. Are you down in Georgia already, Dar? You've got to be in Georgia already. Unless she's like still on Georgia. the road. Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Anyway, because of course, why would she be in Georgia, Glenn Watt? Because I believe there is a third annual Georgia Cigar Boss Guitar this Festival. This many people. Yeah, it's starting tonight with a couple of, a couple oh. of uh, performances, but then it goes on all day tomorrow. Yeah, I was just singing Georgia on my mind. Immediately switch into wish you were here. No, not so much wish you were here, wish I was there. Ah, <laughs> yes. Wish I was there. All yeah, right, so. True, right? Uh, Videos, uh, we got oh, a good one from our buddy Dono. Uh, if you remember a week or, was that last week? Last week, yep. We are talking about he built a guitar for Dweezil Zappa. Yeah. Oh, I, I forgot to let you know. Uh, some of our intrepid viewers uh, commented to let us know the names of Frank Zappa's other two children. Yes, Kirk. I've forgotten uh, them already. I've, I've already forgotten them as well, but they Moon are... Moon Unit, Dweezil. There was two others that... There are two others. ...are not Bob and Rebecca. That, it's not, not Pete so, and Jane. Not Pete they and Jane. They are not. So... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for people who take the time to comment on, on our, our videos on, yeah. on YouTube, on Facebook, everywhere. It's, it's good stuff. It's good um, as a little special treat today, I'm just going to do a quick... So good. <laughs> you'll, see more, <laughs> you'll see more of that here in a bit. Yes. Um, got the new hobo fiddle, all sorts of good stuff. Walk Corner, hey. of course, yeah. uh, and probably some things I don't even know about yet. I'd like to keep a couple of things uh, as, a, as a surprise, even, gonna be a couple even to me. Balls. You know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Diva. Ooh. Eric Denton says Diva, Ahmet and Diva. I'm Ahmet. Yes. Thank you, Kirk. Dweezil, 
moon unit, Amet Diva. There. I'm glad this mystery has finally been cleared up. Thank you, all of you. There's J Dub just Get tuned up. in. All right, so we're going to start off by talking about a couple of tidbits. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you see uh, those of you in Georgia, actually. Um, Mike Snowden down there in that area, I believe. Uh, long time builder, uh, one of the, he, I'd say he's one of the best known cigar box guitar builders. He, he doesn't really interact with the larger community that I've seen. He's, I haven't seen him on the nation, haven't, you know, I don't, I've never even spoken to the man, but he consistently gets good press down there. He's on, the latest one being Georgia Public Radio. They did a spot on, on him and his building. He always says, you know, he always does his best to, to say nice things about cigar box guitars and, and all of that. So uh, it's, it's always good to see cigar box guitars in the, uh, the MSM, the mainstream media. Speaking of which, may I please jump in on that? Oh, quick? It, yeah. I see that. Uh, up. I, uh, I'm not a huge Black Keys fan. In fact, I couldn't name you one song, but I know I've heard a couple. Uh, of those people that are fans of the Black Keys, however, they recently played. Hey, hey different camera shots. I, yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> they recently played over somewhere in Kansas, I believe, and uh, I believe uh, Auerbach, Auerbach, uh, I believe, might be the front person for that band. Yeah. Was it a two-person band? Could be. And he was. Uh, the article reads that he was tearing it up on stage on a cigar box guitar. Nice. So yeah, it is. Speaking of mainstream media and mainstream music-ish type things, that's I always get the black keys and the white stripes mixed up. I ain't gonna lie. All right, back to the main cam. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> technology people, man. All right, uh, I see Jim Burt out there. Roll Jimbo time. Burt. He's gonna be at the Georgia Festival tomorrow. Probably already there tonight. Uh, Tomorrow, Jim is going to be broadcasting yeah. live. I was going to wait to tell you this, but it's coming out now, people. It's going to be broadcasting live to the Cigar Box Nation page. A little bit uh, after today's show, going to make Jim a contributor to the Nation page here on Facebook. And by God, he's going to be going live. And you all, we all, will be able to at least remotely share in the good times happening down there in McDonough. Georgia. That's McDonough? really cool. McDonough, McDonough, I believe. Yeah, something like that. That's really cool. Uh, that that Jim even offered, or however, however does y'all work oh, it out? Rusty had first brought it up, and then Jim got a hold of me, and by God, things are happening. I think it's great. I think you know, just to have that sort of uh, collaboration, that sort of interaction with people that are many miles apart, you know, working many, together. Many miles. Many miles working together to to bring that event to uh, everyone possible. I think that's really nifty. So it is good on you technology and Jim and Rusty. bringing us together yeah. by God. Um, so what am I holding right now? You may ask. Let's let's do a little technology right. here. Give you a close up. Ooh. Take a look at that there. This is the first assembled prototype version of the new Hobo Fiddle DIY kit. Um, as of when did this go live? Yesterday? Yeah. I think so. The night before that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as of a couple days ago, the ho long-awaited Hobo Fiddle kit is now finished. Sounds good. Uh, this one I put some stain on, but of course it comes with a, a bare natural wood so that you can stain it yourself. It sounds good. It's easy to build. The official Hobo Fiddle kit is now available. I'm so happy about it. It took forever. I'm sorry it took as long as it hey. did, but you know, some things you gotta ease up on. You can't just go barreling into stuff all the time. You gotta, you gotta ease on in. Some things you wanna just do right. Yeah. Don't want to just do. Well, a lot of it depended on finding just the right box that I could get in bulk. And I finally found one. We print that design on the front there. It's uh, some original artwork by Farley that I took and put in that kind of oval deal to make it look more like an old cigar box. Um, yeah, the fret markers, uh, Shaq pointed out the fret markers are engraved in there. Mm -hmm. And they are actual... I don't know if you can see them. Those are actual old hobo glyphs uh, that mean things like safe place to camp, danger, safe water, um, tell a sad story here to get a handout. Some good stuff there. Um, so I'm happy with it. Uh, we've actually got them on pre-order. I did that so that we'd have time uh, that the folks in the uh, CB Giddy workshop 
and packing mm -hmm. department would have time to get the fretboards made and fretted, and we'd have time to get enough of these boxes printed up. So pre-order through October 6th, and we'll throw in, I didn't bring the goodie bag. I was just thinking, ah, but in that this mess. package of goodness for the pre-order, one gets what? Well, for anybody who pre-order, we got a little echo going on. Yes, we on. do. I don't know what that is. Yes, we do. Maybe that'll get rid of it. Um, anybody who pre-orders during this pre-order period will get a hobo gift pack mm -hmm. valued at just over $35. It's the hobo glyphs and signs poster set. It's the, the cord posters. A uh, hobo oval bumper sticker that mm -hmm. has never been. A, I've had a box of them on my table for a while now. Some guy's got one on his car already. Oh, I've got one on the back of my pickup truck. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Hard Times Make Great Music uh, thing and a copy of my Legend of the Hobo Fiddle book, which kind of helps bring it all together. So yeah. during this pre-order period, that comes along with the kit for free. Um, Shaq Collins asks, string type. These are nylon strings. Just like what I put on the original. Mm. This is my original hobo fiddle. Very nearly in tune, but those are nylon strings. You got a wound, silver wound nylon, and then two plain nylon. Gives it a nice, kind of soft, gentle, warm, happy tone. Part ukulele, part guitar, all awesome. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> but the delivery was excellent. <laughs> Caught him off guard with that one. Okay, what's next? I, I think we got a, a video. Oh, We've cool. got a video from our buddy. Oh, I just wanted to thank Mr. Charles Frick or Fricky. He was the first one to pre order one of the Hobo Fiddle kits. I'll be throwing a little extra something in there for Charles once these are ready to ship out. That's cool. Hey, look who we got out there now. Farley, Zoli, Viva, Viva Nova. Nova. What's up? Hey, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right, so our first video is from TG. He's noodling around a little bit on his recently completed Chicago electric three-string cigar box guitar kit. Mm -hmm. Got the distortion cranked up a little bit, so uh, this is my first test here to see if I can... It's going to be good. Oh, so good. Like, so good. So good we don't even know, really, just how good it is yet. And Robert, thank you very much for joining us on YouTube, my man. Here we go. Brace mm -hmm. yourselves, people. Short and sweet, but yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, looked like he was using his forward-facing camera, so the kit label was reversed, but that was the Chicago Electric three-string cigar box guitar kit. Louis saying the video volume was too low. All right, thank you. I will crank that up on the next one. Sorry about that. We got farther ye, buddy, yeah, huh? All right. <laughs> good stuff happening. All right. All right, so um, the next thing that is up uh, just part of our uh, audio and, and video shenanigans today. Uh, we're going to switch over to the condenser mics. Going to silence our uh, lapel mics mm -hmm. because I'm Glenn and I are going to give you an old Irish number called Inishir. Glenn strumming the six-string guitar you mm -hmm. saw him holding in the first half of today's show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be playing the cigar box fiddle. Very excited about That's this. That's not it. That is not it. That's the hobo fit. I get confused, you know? This, uh, let me pull it up here so I can try to give a close-up. This cigar box fiddle, or violin, was built by our good buddy Jim Morris. I've had it hanging on the wall here in the Juke Shack for a couple, two, three years now. I, I'm not even sure how long. Um, and it's, for most of that time, it has been a prop. It's been a, uh, a wall decoration. Um, but, of course, Jim built it to be played, and several weeks back, uh, I took it home and started noodling around on it, trying to see if I could learn how to play the fiddle. 
Now, people ask, what's the difference between a violin and a fiddle? I, somebody, one of our friends posted that a violin has strings and a fiddle has strings. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's really... <laughs> that's not bad. Huh? I think that's an apt... Well, it's all, yeah. Description? It's all in what you're playing and how you play how it, you I play guess. It. So it. this is an old Irish number. I've been working on some of the Irish tunes and such. Um, so, all right, bear with me for a second. I'm going to mash some buttons. I'm going to bring this. All right, now we are on the condenser mic. So it'll sound a little different, but I didn't want all the volume of this fiddle going through this mic because it would probably not be uh, too fun for everybody. All right. All right. Um, Shall I? Yes. take us a go through to get the rhythm quite right. But... nothing easier to sound bad on than a fiddle <laughs> except maybe the bagpipes um, so that's one of the songs I've been tunes I've been working on um, just a brief snippet of a couple more I'll just do these I'll do these yep, yep, yep. just on spikes or the uh whatever you know what i'm saying i know 
All right, we back? There we go. Um, so yeah, w one of the two things that make the uh, fiddle bloody hard to play. Uh, one, there's no frets on this neck, so you've got to get your finger in exactly the right spot every time, or else it sounds sharp or flat. You probably picked up in those uh, two tunes that were played there that there are a number of the notes that, that we're a little bit off, and so, you know, I hear that while playing and trying to gently adjust, get the intonation right, and that only comes with practice. And then the other thing, of course, is the mechanics of the bow. Mm. Keeping the bow perpendicular to the strings, only hitting one string at a time, which requires the angle to just be right, unless you want to hit two strings at once to get a little bit of a, a two-tone. Oh, we got echo? Hey. Okay. I did turn off the top mics. Well, well. How about that? Any echo now? Echo, echo, echo. Sorry about that. I thought I had them off. Thought I was being clever. Are we good? We're I, good. I don't know. All right. Well, I press can, on. I'll tell you how we can find out. Give me just a second here, folks. How are we sounding? I don't hear any echo. There you go. Maybe a little bit. Um, all right, good now, good. Uh, that's a little too loud still. Sorry, this is technology. So yeah, the fiddle is bloody hard to play, and I just want to say I was inspired to try to learn it by the many awesome videos mm -hmm. that Jim Morris has posted. Um, it's like, by God, I want to learn how to do that. So I'm, I'm on my way. Got a long ways to go yet, and uh, still sounds hollow. Huh. Maybe you've got a battery dying? I don't know. Oh, we do have a battery dying. We might have to go back to the environmental mics. Oh. Why not? There we are. All right, well, we're running off the condensers for the rest of the show, folks. Do it. Um, hey, it's what we started. Well, we didn't even start. We started with webcams and yeah. nonsense. So, uh, reverb. Reverb. <laughs> this is dust off. Huh? <laughs> Still have the reverb. I don't know what's happening. Might have been uh, accidentally. Anyway, there's a lot of buttons to mash. Anyway, what we've got next is another, the, an awesome video for you. Yes. Uh, it's our good buddy Janice Wilson Hughes, J Dub, uh, practicing, getting ready for tomorrow's Georgia Cigar Box Guitar Festival. She's doing a Sheryl Crow song. You know, a lot of times uh, you hear uh, blues on cigar box guitars or rock. You know, I get into more of the Americana, old-timey stuff, but hearing a little more, uh, I don't think it's Sheryl Crow's yet considered classic rock, is she? I don't She's know. She's been around for a while, but anyway, it's, it's good nice stuff. It's nice to hear something different. Kind of a new interpretation, yeah. or her own, Janice's own interpretation of it. So without further ado, I'm going to, by God, just get in here and Pull this up. Oh, so good. It's gonna be good. If I'd stop talking and actually focus, this would go a lot better. Well, we've got some good feedback. Uh, some well, some good things being said <laughs> out there. Orlin Ford, and Michael Capato, John Cram, all saying it's good on the YouTube side, audio-wise. Thank all you. All right. I while this is going, I'm gonna have another try at getting rid of that reverb. I think I know what happened. Cool. All right. Here we go. All right, so I remembered about 10, uh, 15 seconds into that to crank the audio up a little bit, so hopefully that got better. 
Um, and hopefully we're now running without any reverby such. <laughs> so many knobs to crank and buttons yes, to push. I ain't going to lie. So thank you, thank uh, Janice, for putting that together. You can certainly, uh, if you're in the Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia area, get over to the Georgia Cigar Box Guitar Festival tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be an awesome time over yeah. there. Tomorrow, the, uh, the Mean Street players, the Mean Street music players will be playing over there. At, uh, and that includes Janice, Sean Cruz, Eric Denton over there at the festival, along nice. with people like John Nickel, Dar Stellabata, One Hand Dan, Sky Page. Travis Boland. Travis Boland. Making the trip over. Oh, yes, buddy. All sorts of good stuff. All sorts of good stuff. And hopefully, you'll be able to see a good bit of it live on the Cigar Box Nation page yeah. on Facebook, thanks to our good buddy, Jim Burt. Heck yeah. yes. Hey, you know what time it is? No. Oh, is it that time? I don't wait, have anything. Wait, 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 wait. Really? You won't. I don't think I know how to do this as a G. Uh, Here it is. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Wait. Welcome back to Bot Corner. You know the deal. This is where you send us some good stuff. We turn around and share with the rest of the world, and that world is you. So thank you very much for the panda head, because that is always a... A welcome addition to any corner, be it Watt or otherwise. It's just the opener. Don't yeah, worry. Don't, don't be scared. But first up, we have in Watt Corner today is Ron L. I hope you're out there, Ron. I haven't seen you yet, but Ron is always building some really cool stuff. He does a lot of lap steels. Uh, recently, it's been on water skis. In this case, however, what we have here from Ron L. is a two-string bass guitar with a sycamore box and an oak and walnut neck. The top image is from an old Japanese photo album. I mean, that's where you see here that Ben zoomed in on. Uh, the scale length is 34 inches. Again, that's a Japanese photo album on the top lid of the, uh, the box. 34-inch uh, base has a preamp and a rod piezo. And one of the many reasons why I want to share what Ron has built is, is because he's always cranking out really cool stuff, but it's that he is a, and I've said this before in a, in a, a, a former or previous Watt Corner, uh, he does a lot of sourcing from around him. So. Uh, you know, the wood that's in his area, whether it be on his land or, or down the road. In this case, uh, he harvested the sycamore that built that box. He harvested the sycamore from trees that were victims of the annual flood stage water release from Beaver Dam in Beaver, Arkansas. So if you're anywhere near there, maybe you can kind of feel the tinge of pride that he feels and that I know that I feel for him about making such a cool thing because that wood came from right down the road. So good stuff, Ron. I'm glad you shared it, man. Thank you very much. Next up, we've got from Hal, that's Manitoba Hal Broland, for those of you not knowing. Uh, he writes, thank you, CB Giddy. For... So Hal hooked up with us for our education discount. If you don't know already, if you are somebody, or who, an individual, or an institution, a school, whatever, that uses our parts and or kits in group learning environments, uh, we give you a 25% discount. Uh, in this case, Hal had uh, up in Nova Scotia, where he's, he's up, he's, those were his stomping ground, grounds up in O Canada. Um, up in Nova Scotia, they had a, uh, a ukulele building fest at the 6th Street, 6th Dock Street ukulele camp up in Nova Scotia. So he writes, thank you for being a small link in the chain that connects those people uh, to uh, handmade musical instruments. He writes, Hal writes, we had a ball learning to play our cigar box ukuleles, and the ladies who opted to build theirs had even more fun. All the ukes were assembled and decorated one day, given some drying time for the glue, which was, I think, 24 hours. Uh, but he writes, it, it was tremendous fun seeing these campers put instruments together. Most have never used a power tool before, and they all cut their own sound holes and did all the sanding and prep work. And those, the, some of the instruments that you see uh, there, those are some of the ukuleles that they built. And I think that's, that's part of the reason that we, you know, we're part of, CB Giddy is part of things like this, is to connect those people who have never even used their, their hands or their minds to create art, this, these functioning pieces of art, these, these handmade musical instruments. And they, to know that gratification that you know, to know that gratification that we know of building our own instruments, uh, we're, we're helping connect those people to it. And I think it's really cool that Hal has such a big role, played such a big role in connect, helping these ladies in particular connect, uh, be connected to ukuleles. So thank you, Hal. Next up, we have from Joe S. Joe S. is a quiet contributor to CB Giddy Crafter Supply. I don't see her anywhere, Joe, anywhere on social media. Uh, but, and hopefully, Joe, uh, I, hopefully you see this. I would like to, I'd like to think that you do. She writes, uh, this was made, what you see here, this was made from an old box that I found at an estate sale, which is a great source for unusual and wonderful boxes and tins. I love looking for them there and CB Giddy Crafter Supply for all my needs to build and finish up a grand project. There's love in each piece 
and playing them is a great big bonus. Now, you may wonder, like, Glenn, why are you showing us this picture of a, you know, I want to be wowed and have my, my socks knocked off. For whatever it's worth, this does knock my socks off. And, and it's, it's because that she's willing to, you know, to express that which, she, that which she feels about the, again, these things that we build and, these, the, and, and to express that experience, to, the positivity that one feels when, when creating art and when creating music. And I think it's really awesome, Joe. And I hope that if you do see this, that you continue to build into play. And she's been building now for a while and buying from CB Giddy for a while. And uh, it's really good to see her continually contributing. So thank you, Joe. Uh, next up, we have from our good man, Vern. This is not Vern, but you've seen Vern several times here on the Giddy Gang Show because he often has opt or has previously uh, contributed videos, performance videos, uh, that are all awesome. And in this case, however, he writes uh, that this is here is his brother-in-law, Josh. Says Vern, Josh is a good father, a good husband, and a hardworking individual. Josh recently started driving a semi-tractor uh, tractor trailer and is on the road much of, all, uh, much of the month. He mentioned that while away from home, he misses playing guitar, and that space in his cab, of course, is limited for a conventional or a standard six-string guitar. So, Vern gave him that two-string chugger that you see in Josh's hands. Uh, that two-string chugger was actually built by friend Jim Wallace, who I think we've seen on the show before, and uh, out of a jewelry box that belonged to Vern's dad. So, Josh passed the, uh, Vern passed that along to Josh, and uh, Josh even got himself a little amp to keep with him in the, uh, the cab of his truck so he can jam out at truck stops, what I think is really awesome so thank you Vern. really just keeping it in the family and doing really good stuff and sharing that joy of art awesome stuff man next up we got from rick rick writes uh this is not this again this is another special thing to me and i i just had i saw i you'll be you'll get all the wow pictures at the end this is this is, you're getting my stuff first uh rick writes i wanted to build a cigar boss guitar for a while and I, this is, so this is his first, and he actually used our flagship, our oldest kit, Ben's oldest kit, the first kit built, you know, put together 10 years ago now, nine years ago. Um, and that's what Rick used here. And he writes, wanted to build a cigar, cigar box guitar for a while, and I am glad I stumbled on CB Giddy. I was able to use a piece of wood that I took off my grandmother's dresser that was handed down to me to make the neck. I now have a wonderful instrument and something to remember my sweet grandmother by. And... Uh, this is the kind of stuff that gets tugs at my heartstrings, and I, you know, there's nothing better. I mean, we can all build uh, incredible jaw-dropping instruments, but the ones that uh, drop my jaw the furthest are the ones that uh, that uh, have a bit of a have a bit of story to them. So, thank you very much, Rick. I hope you see this, man. It was I'm really glad that you that you, you sent this in, and I hope that you continue to find uh, joy in building. So, thanks, man. And la almost last up, we got Papa Peach. Uh, you might have seen this in the CB Giddy uh, newsletter or on Facebook because I couldn't help but share it multiple times. Uh, that's Papa Peach at a uh, car show at, in which he was selling some of his wares, his cigar box guitars, and that's his uh, great granddaughter with him, his great granddaughter. And uh, Papa Peach writes that uh, it's never too soon to teach my great granddaughter how to play guitar. And uh, even if she has no concept of what's going on, it's all good because he's spending time with that little girl and uh, she's touching a piece of uh, artwork that. Hopefully, she gets to see for the rest of her life. I think that's really special stuff, man. So thanks for sharing that. Now, last up. We got, uh, this is the wow stuff. This is from David. Uh, I've seen, I saw it posted on The Nation. He posted it in the Friends of Giddy Facebook group. I'm sure he's posted it elsewhere. But David's got, you can just scroll through these, man. Thank you very much, Ben. You can see this amazing guitar. Uh, that if you, I wish you could see it up close, or you see the pictures up close. Uh, the, 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 the craftsmanship that he used uh, to hand carve all this stuff is just uh, amazing. But he's got a theme to this. You can see little birds on it here and there. And, you see, and see that little like, that little thigh rest? That's not just some you know sticking out of the box. That's a very smart piece. Like much like a conventional guitar sits on your thigh for easier playing. That little curve there. He's had that little curve piece on the on the bottom of his guitar, so it rests on a thigh for uh, comfortable playing. Uh, and you can also see a bird painted on the back of that box. As we continue on, there's the bird or drawn on. And I think David actually uh, did that himself. I'm confident he did it himself. Um, and if you keep going, Ben, I think. What we have here now, get the, the box opened. Now you can see neatly tucked in there. He, he's got little emblems and little pieces of tchotchkes or whatnot that celebrate the theme of this, this bird theme. You can even see a psycho knob on your bottom right. He's got a uh, distortion wired in there, and he's just he's got a lot more uh, neatness going on than I ever have. And you can see that he's got the dedication on the underside of the box lid to the recipient of said guitar. And then I think this is the, the last image. This is the, uh, the bird up upon which 
the uh, the guitar was based, and this is uh, the owner or the caretaker of this bird. That's who the uh, the guitar was for, and I think he just did a great job, David. I uh, it's that kind of stuff that just makes you makes me almost want to stop building if I ever try to try to reach your level. But anyways, now that is the end, and I thank you all. That is the end for. Uh, for the watts in the corners. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, Ron L is out there. Good oh. to see you, brother. And Tim oh. Henderson. There we are. Oh, jeez. Hey, God. now. What the fix? Hey. There. All right. Don't worry, folks. Trained professionals. Oh, Lord. Hey, look, we're back. All right. Uh, after that, just mash them. Uh, up next, we have yes. another video for you. Um, this is a montage uh, from our buddy Louis Lamana, who recently finished up a new album. Uh, he, he sent along some photos of, of the album being recorded, him playing various instruments, his wife Deb, and another gentleman who I believe is his brother. Um, this is an excerpt about a minute long from one of the songs he put on there, which is Loch Lomond, a uh, good old Scottish song, You Take the High Road and I'll Take the Low Road. And he, uh, as I was listening through it, Louis worked in some uh, some uh, customized lyrics. The Giddy Gang gets a mention, yeah. all sorts of good stuff. But he's got some of the good old traditional songs on here. Cluck Old Hen, Going Back to Dixie, Hard Times Come Again No More, Lock Loman, Lucy Long, uh, Darlin' Nellie Gray, Blow You Winds, all sorts of good stuff. We're going to be giving away five. Uh, he sent us five of these CDs to give away. Um, for those of you who want to get in on that, the first five people to send a message to the Cigar Box Nation page on Facebook uh, will be entered and we'll get one of those shipped out for you. So thank you, Louie. Uh, here is the video that I montage that I put together. Going to see if I can manage to not hose this up. While you're doing Anybody that, anybody taking bets? Joe Chipman, stick around because we got. Uh, yeah, Joe. Talk we're talking about that. That another don't, bit. Don't go away, buddy. All right, here we go. The buttons are being mashed. Mash them. Oh, mashery. My young money banks and my young money brings where the sun shines bright on like low. Me and my true love are ever want to go on the bonny bonny banks of like low Oh, you take the high road and I'll take the low road. I'll be in Scotland before you. But me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny bonny banks of like low Parted from Farley and Glen on the street right beside old Ben Giddy, where in purple through the Highland Hills we flew, and the moon shining down on the city. Oh, you take the high road and I'll take the low road. Dang it. Hey. Hey. There we are. Uh, so, um, yeah, thank you, Louie, for that. And again, if you want a copy of that CD, we've got five of them mm -hmm. to send out. Send us a message on the Cigar Box Nation Facebook page or uh, hopefully there's timestamps on them or on by YouTube Messenger. You check those, right? People sending messages to the, to the nation, nation page, page on I have, YouTube. I will start this. <laughs> Absolutely start. we do. We keep close uh, eye on it. So yes, thank you for that, Louie, and thank you for the CDs. Good stuff. I know we're moving on, but have you? Did you receive the CB Giddy Crafter Supply uh, newsletter this week? I did. Did you? I think did so. Did you vote? Did I vote? Oh, yes, you did. I, I did. know you I did. did. Okay, I know you good. did. So I hope that us. you received the CB Giddy Crafter Supply uh, newsletter because in it this week we're trying something fun and new. This one was just for fun, but it could develop into something bigger later down the road. There's a poll in there. A it was poll. A, it was a simple poll. And just asks, which headstock design do you use the most? Of the two, straight or angled? So, you know, oh, straight okay. like, uh, straight, like straight. Or angled, like angled. You get it. There you go, straight. So this is straight, recessed, you or, know, the, the notch style. Or angled. Let's see. Yeah. Bring it in close. 
There you go. Straight. Yeah. Notch or cut out, and then you got that angled or scarf joint. Scarf joint. Yeah. Scarf joints are harder. You but know, they take more cutting and, and precision. But we've got kits to help you do that. Well, that's true. We've got a handy dandy scarf joint miter jig uh, that we created actually here at CB Giddy that makes it a lot easier. I believe Sue Messias got herself one recently and was so. happy with it. Yeah. Good. Now, of, like those, it. Uh, of those two, whether they be angled or straight, if you were to guess the current results, who do you think is leaning more straight or more angled? I'd go with I'd go with the straight, the recessed straight headstock. I would have as well. Easier. But as it stands, as of half an hour before this show air go, went on air, we had 58 percent of the res, uh, respondents going with angled, 42 nice. percent with straight. Some fancy business yeah. out there. Hey, we got Mr. Nick Lanciano tuning in yeah. from abroad, All right, Nick. out out in the wilds. Hey, hey, we're we're mashing some buttons here, yes. buddy. Um, Good stuff. All right, so we've got two videos now for you. We're going to run back to back uh, with a little bit of button mashing in between, I imagine. Um, this is our buddy Dono. We talked about him yeah. last, last week, week, I believe. Yep. Uh, he built a guitar for Dweezil's Apple. Zap's Apple. Dweezil's <laughs> Apple. Da, da, da. Uh, well, here we, we got a video of Dono playing it, yep. and then a short clip of Mr. Zappa himself. So, sweet. Oh, hold on to your britches, people. This is going to be good. It's getting tight. It's getting tight. All right. There's that. There's that. And all of it. Here and it comes. here we go. All right, so it seemed like only appropriate that the very first song that I tried to play here on the Zappa Caster, Dweezil's guitar I built for him for his birthday, it wasn't very large There was just enough room to cram the drums In the corner over by the Dodge It was a 54 with a mashed up door And a cheesy little lamp With a sign on the front that said Fender Champ And a second hand guitar It was the Zappa Caster with a whammy bar But a couple, couple of quarts of beer Would fix it so the intonation would not offend your ear And the same old chords going over and over became a symphony It was all we knew and easy to, but it sounded good to me All we did was bend the string like That's my cigar box version of Joe's Garage on the Dweezil Zappa Caster. Rock on. Now we're back with all right. sound and all. So thank you, Dono, for sending those in. Good stuff. Yeah, it is. Um, I do want to send out a quick uh, apology to our buddy Del Puckett. We've got a video from you that I went to load it into the thing today, and it was upside down and had no sound. So we will keep working on that and get your video to run once Nick is back in the, uh, in the producer's chair. So sorry about that, Del. We do still have it, and we're not ignoring you. I promise. Now, without Ooh. further ado, I have to show off something beautiful mm -hmm. that was received this week unexpectedly here at Giddy Headquarters. 
our buddy Joe Chipman, who was out there earlier, and hopefully still is. Uh, if you, if the name sounds familiar, last year around the time of the York uh, Festival in 2018, the Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Festival, uh, Joe gave Shane Spiegel a guitar, a be absolutely beautiful uh, purple uh, a guitar, and I guess Joe decided I needed something nice too. And so this little beauty right here arrived this week. Let me switch the cam. It is a beauty. I mean, the detail and attention to detail on this guitar is really phenomenal. Radiused fretboard, mm. radiused saddle mm. on the bridge there, a nice purloid pick guard, uh, but inset fret markers on the side, a couple of nice uh, uh, laminated racing stripes there on the neck just just lovely wonderful stuff so Joe thank you it's a uh, it's a four string GDG B mm. and I just had and it's got a uh, preamp in it I believe I imagine that Joe there we go too many chords uh, I believe there's a rod piezo under the uh, under the bridge there or the saddle, and he's got one of our little ukulele preamps in there. So when plugged in, I have no idea where the volume level is going to be. So. Nice. Yep, looks like it's going through. So uh, as I always do when trying out a new guitar, of course, I play my uh, Americana medley. Still in tune. a wee tad there. I think I need to tune it just a bit. It sounds like it's a little bit off, but has a beautiful, nice, high, lovely sound um, and really in love with it. it it's probably the n now suddenly the nicest <laughs> instrument I own. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it really is. So thank you so much for that, Joe. Is he still out there? Yeah, he's still there. Good job. All right, now I'm going to have a go at it. Fortunately, we don't have your bass plugged in, no. so I'm on my own. This makes me think is I need to do some more four string songbooks. Oh <laughs> and such. So thanks again, Joe. That is that is incredible. It awesome. Really is. Amazing. Somebody said it's a it's a work of art and by God it is. Turtle box guitars said that. Yeah, it really is. I am honored that anyone would, would uh, do something so yeah. nice and, and give it to me. Seriously. That's Awesome stuff. All right, what do we got left? Rev Todd. Rev Todd video. Um, I, I, uh, this video, awesome video from our buddy Rev Todd at, at Primitive Guitars. It's a little shaky. <laughs> I don't know if he had the camera strapped to his puppy dog's head or what, but awesome video nonetheless. Thank you, Rev Todd, for sending this yes. in. Um, take your motion sickness pills, folks. Got an awesome message, though. Awesome message. Yes. All right. Oh. Okay, not going to mess this up. Mm. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Well, what hasn't already go, gone wrong? That's probably what yeah, uh, that's the right. way of looking at all it. All right, here we go. I see things. Okay, that's on. Going to turn our audio off. Giddy gang and Cigar Box Nation. My name is Rev Todd. I build primitive guitars. 
Started vacation the other day, went and got my hair cut, got my beard trim, did not do a full Glen Watt on it, if you know what I mean. Um, I just want to kind of challenge a bunch of people out there to maybe do what I've been doing for a while. It's not like I'm some great guy because Jim Morris with back porch banjos have been doing this. A lot of people do it, but I just want to actually have everybody maybe start posting that they're doing it, showing about it. Find somebody that has never built a guitar, that has never played one, get their hands on one and build one with them. I'm actually doing that currently with my buddy Will. This is the start of the guitar. It's going to be awesome. Look at it. It's great. But like I said, the important thing is getting out there, getting somebody involved that may not have ever been involved. Because man, I tell you what, we've all experienced it. The first time you build a guitar and you put strings on it and you tune it up, and it makes that noise, you're going to love it. Get somebody involved. Do it. Do it. Do it. Have a great day, guys. Audio's back, yeah. Well, Primitive uh, Primitive Guitars is the uh, is the YouTube channel if you want to check them out. Uh, Rev Todd over at Primitive Guitars, I believe, is the name of the YouTube channel, and uh, he does every Tuesday night. He has the Tuesday night guitar club meeting over there, and he's uh, he's a really good guy doing really good things. And he's also the builder that built the uh, don't startle me the six string three string mando thing, I believe. You yes, call it, that got that shipped we off. We gave that away for the hundredth show. That was awesome, yes. and and I can't remember the j name of the gentleman who who won it, mm. but oh, he God. sent he sent a couple of photos. Oh, cool! I didn't know that. Of him holding it, and I promptly forgot to do anything with those photos. So Correct. yes, awesome stuff all around. Um, as I mentioned, as we mentioned several times, hey, Ma Giddy out there, hey. the uh, the uh, Georgia third annual Georgia International Cigar Box Guitar Festival kicks off tonight. Goes through tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Our buddy Jim Burt going to be broadcasting as much of it as he can live to the Nation Facebook page, which 55 of you are watching this show on right now. I'm not sure how many are on YouTube. Unfortunately, from his phone, he can't simulcast uh, to YouTube. So it's all just going to be on Facebook, and uh, it's going to be good times down there, as far as I know. What you got going? I don't have the bass on me, so I have to. Oh, yeah. I've got to figure. Nope. I should play it on the fiddle, and we can both just be lost kids without a. Um, also, 1st of November, 1st through the 3rd of November, the Chicago Cigar Box Guitar Festival coming right up. And then in January, New Orleans, Nolens Cigar Box Guitar Festival.
Oh, yeah. I got to end this thing, ah. don't I? Don't Good worry, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been Have a, a great weekend. All new show, folks. Ain't going to lie. Yeah. So we got this. I'll do the dance. Do the dance.